Hello world, I'm here today doing a Mac video. I haven't done a Mac video in absolutely yonks because there are, to be honest, better people than me at doing these things. I can't do a tutorial, I'm not very good at them. But this one is just to highlight some of the best bits about uh, getting a new Mac, especially if you're my friend Hannah, who since we did that unboxing, which was a couple of weeks ago, and I've only just thought to upload it onto YouTube. But, I mean, she's just bought this thing, and I keep getting phone calls saying, Oh, Marky P, I can't do it! Marky P, Marky P! So, uh, this is really to act as kind of an aid memoir of things I've shown her about her Mac, and also to try and make PC users want one, and also to help you if you have just bought a new Mac and you've been using a PC for umpteen years and you don't know uh, where to start on your Mac. When you first turn on your Mac, you'll be prompted to create a login password. So do that. Um, and that will be every time you turn on your Mac or wake it up from the screensaver or something like that, um, that you put that password in. And uh, then it will ask you to create an Apple ID. The only circumstance where I would say don't create an Apple ID is if you already have one. If you already use the uh, iTunes, I think it's still available for PC. So if you use iTunes to buy things uh, like music and TV programs, uh, then use your old one because then all of your old purchases will transfer onto your new computer with no problems whatsoever. Otherwise, if you're just starting out completely from scratch, then create an Apple ID, okay? It's just basically an email address, any email address will do, and a password, which I would make different from the password that you use to sign in, but that's just me being thinking of security, okay? So once you've gone through that procedure, don't forget either of those passwords, okay? Because you will need them to update your computer and to obviously sign into your computer as well. Um, if you're, you know, if you're login password, whatever. Okay, all right, when you open, when, when it finally sort of comes to the screen, it will not be this handsome busker that uh, I saw in Cardiff many years ago. It will be Apple's own screen savery thing on here you can change that but the first thing you should do is go to this apple menu up here okay it's the equivalent of the windows menu i suppose in many ways you can do about this mac that will tell you the specifications of your mac okay you can do system preferences system preferences when you open system preferences it takes a little while even on a fast mac this is a fast mac by the way and uh, yeah, it's still a bit slow. The first thing you should do is go to security and privacy here and go to firewall, not fire vault, file vault, I mean, not fire vault, firewall, and make sure that that firewall is on, okay? It says click the lock to make changes. You cannot change that password or turn the firewall on or off without making changes And here. This is where it will want your password and then it will let you toggle the firewall on or off. So make sure it's on. The password that it wants, by the way, is your login password. Okay, we're going to cancel that and come out of that. But yeah, just make sure that is on. That is the only security software that you will really need. Because as I say, um, you'll see on the video where Hannah unboxed her Mac that PC World... She, went, she originally went to PC World and then changed and went to the Apple Store. She got them to refund all her money and everything. Because they made her buy a MacBook Air, the lower spec MacBook Air that she's got, and then tried to sell her £300 worth of extras that she didn't really need. And one of those things was uh, security software, and you don't need to buy it for a Mac. But you do need to make sure that firewall's on. So do that straight away. As soon as you've logged in and everything, then uh, do that, okay? Uh, the other thing that you'll need to do while you're in system preferences, again, go to that security and privacy. Now let's have a look at this file vault thing, okay? File vault secures the data on your disk by encrypting its contents automatically. Hmm, yeah, 
it slows the computer down it's not strictly speaking necessary and if you've got a laptop with about 256 uh, gigabytes of hard disk space and stuff like that then you probably don't need it so again you have to click the lock to make changes and then make sure that Firevolt is turned off okay it otherwise it will create a headache for you okay so once you've done that you can come out of system preferences for a little bit now the next thing on this uh, top menu thing here is uh, the name of the app that is currently on okay now mine is QuickTime player uh, but if I go to maybe pages down here okay here's a document in here that's open in pages now you'll see that that changes to pages if I get rid of this poster here you'll see that pages still has not closed down okay so we'll get that back up again okay so if I get that up again these three traffic light buttons here uh, you might be able to see this I'll have to put my glasses on folks but when you hover over them they do actually tell you what they do okay so the red one will close the current window the yellow one will minimize your window into what's called the dock which is this bar down here okay it will go to the right hand side of the dock and it will come back up again and you've got that lovely genie graphic which uh, caused a few rounds of applause when Steve Jobs demonstrated it in about the year 2000 or something and then so the yellow one is to minimize and the green one toggles between full screen and not full screen okay and to get back to those three dots the three traffic light dots then you just hover your mouse back up again see down here working on my document tap 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 type 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 come up here just with with the mouse and then the, that toolbar will come back down again and you can take that back to how it was okay you can resize windows by the way move them around see I'm just clicking and dragging to move around and you can also drag that window to whatever size you want and you'll notice that the document itself doesn't resize so that's rather nifty so if you really do want to quit pages you have to come up here pages and quit pages you'll see that there's a shortcut there a keyboard shortcut called command and Q command there's a command bar on the left of the space bar on the keyboard and there's a command button on the right hand side of the um, space bar it's got that sort of wiggly um, square thing I think it's a clover or something like that but that 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 is your um, your quit pages shortcuts and by and large um, if you just substitute the control key for the command key in the Mac then you'll have all those window shortcuts so command and C will copy information command and S will save command and V will paste so in Windows it will be control and Q to quit the, uh, an application and in the Mac it's command and Q but you can just go ahead and quit it okay another way that you can quit a document and I say this with reverence bless Hannah she brought her air around to me the other day and she'd kind of done this <laughs> to try and get rid <laughs> of a document <laughs> and she laughed but yeah it's those three buttons okay quickly run over those again that will close the current window but it won't close the app so you can open a new document as it were um, the yellow one minimizes the uh, green one toggles between full screen and uh, a smaller size like this okay so we will quit pages and another way to quit pages as I was going to say is to two finger tap now two finger tapping is that is on a trackpad I use a trackpad and not a mouse but it's the same thing as right clicking so it's two fingers and just tap on the programs icon on the dock and there you can see that you can now quit that document 
okay, and it's gone. All right, um, so now the current um, uh, application that I'm using now is the QuickTime player, which I'm using to record this video, okay? And then there are some, the file edit view and window and help menu all relate to the QuickTime player, okay? Uh, along here, you don't really need to worry too much about most of these things. There are a couple here that uh, are very interesting and useful to look at, but these are just for other things that I've got on my computer. This little square thing here is for um, the QuickTime player to start and stop recording there. Then I've got my Dropbox. Uh, this is for uh, my uh, Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. This is for something that I bought that I shouldn't have ever bought, which is Intego um, antivirus software, which I should really turn off. Um, this is the spotlight search button, okay? Now the spotlight search button, um, Windows eventually have one of these, but uh, the Mac has had uh, uh, some sort of uh, index searching since about 1999 with uh, they had something called Sherlock which they introduced and now it's called Spotlight okay so the, the magnifying glass then is your search button and that will search for anything on your computer okay uh, and it will also go nowadays will go out onto the internet so if I type in here Rager who are my record players you can see that the first hit that comes up is uh, rega.co.uk, uh, but there are other things you see where I've emailed Riga, for example. Um, it will try and find uh, a bit of knowledge about its Siri knowledge, Regata, I don't know what that is. Um, and uh, yeah, a definition there, because obviously um, it doesn't really know the word Rega, it's a brand name, but there we go. Um, so that's actually quite useful there. Also, if you really can't be bothered to go down onto your dock, you can type in the name of an app and the first thing that comes up there, as you can see, is in this case, Pages, okay? It's really, really quick, especially as there is a shortcut button, which you just command and spacebar and let go. So you can do command, spacebar, let go and then uh, you can type in the name of an app um, for example that you want to open and there it comes up okay and it really is far quicker to do than it is to talk about it okay now the next button along is Siri uh, Siri is a new thing or relatively new thing on the Mac um, it is obviously been on the iPhone and the iPad for absolutely ages now, but it's now been included on the Mac and it can do a few other things on the Mac. Okay, so for example, hey Siri, how much hard drive space have I got left? You have 2.22 terabytes storage available. Mm, nice, woohoo. And it will let you show details as well. Oh, go away, there's a little cross there to get rid of it. Again, it's a bit inconvenient sometimes having to drag your mouse up to here so the keyboard shortcut for that which again makes things very very simple is um, to instead of just doing command and spacebar and quick release which gives spotlight instead you can just hold it down hey Siri what's the weather like outside here's the it's forecast for today and, cloudy and, 16 degrees in Hastings. and you heard my phone go off there because I did that wrong Let's do it again. Instead, you don't have to say, hey Siri. If you say, hey Siri, you'll bring your phone up. So, command, spacebar, and hold. What's the weather like outside? Okay, here's the weather for today. Can you rap? Okay, here goes. I wrote this one myself. Apologies in advance to the Sugar Hill Gang. I said a hip hop, save me from the clippy, the peak, peak and pop and you don't stop, spaz a rocket, to the pom pom the digi, say up jump the doozy, to the rhythm of the ontology. <laughs> so there's Siri for you, okay? Quick recap there. Command and spacebar and let go quickly, brings up spotlight. 
If you hold down command and spacebar, Siri will come up. This is Time Machine. Time Machine is uh, where you attach a large enough hard drive to uh, be a double, at least double, the size of the uh, built-in hard drive space. I think I've got about a six, gig, six terabyte one or something because I've got um, other disk drives attached to here. But uh, yeah, um, it will automatically uh, back up your computer whenever it's connected. I strongly recommend you set that up. This button is your Wi-Fi. So again, here, I'm not going to hold that on for too long. But uh, again, you can set your Wi-Fi up from there. This one I've forgotten. This one is Bluetooth, which is useful. Okay. This one is your volume. Okay. So you can drag and drop the volume here. But there are buttons on your keyboard which will also do the volume for you. Um, this is useful if you're like me and you change sound devices a lot, okay? So if you hold down Alt, then you get sound preferences when you click on that. And you can click on sound preferences and up they come and you can see the racket that I'm making here um, with my uh, things. But if you've got, like, like me, I've got my hi-fi connected and all this kind of uh, stuff that's connected onto here and you want to change inputs and outputs and stuff, that's a quick way to do it, okay? Um, this is the date and stuff like that, which is all pretty self-explanatory. And this is uh, the name of the person who is logged in, okay? If you have several people that have login accounts on your computer, you can uh, swipe between them from there, okay? So, uh, the other thing that you might need to be aware of is the Finder. Now, the Finder is a program that is always on Okay, it's a bit like Windows Explorer. It's where you go to find all the stuff that's on your hard drive and it's down here. Okay, uh, so for example, I'm now in documents and so there are, for example, lots of documents that are open there. Okay, now you can, as you can see here, I've also got a tab on here that is my desktop. My desktop is far too cluttered at the moment, I do beg your pardon, but that's all the stuff that's on my desktop. If you want to go into another folder, for example, you can just click on the plus bar and it works like tabbing, you see? So I've got loads of these going on here. And if you want to move a document from one to the other, I don't know what candle is or why, oh, it's a candle. It's a picture of a candle for example, okay? Supposing I wanted to move that somewhere else to my desktop, for example, then I can just drag and drop. Now the desktop tab's open and then you'll see that candle has appeared on my desktop as another piece of clutter, just there, okay? So that's a, a, a handy one to know. Uh, you can also drag and drop folders over onto your sidebar here so that you can get them very quickly, okay? They put some up here for you, creative cloud files, for example, which I haven't got any in, thank goodness. Uh, pictures here, these are pictures that are on my hard drive, okay? And here's a little tip, by the way, okay? If you want to um, change your screensaver and you keep your photos on a separate hard drive, like I do, for use in Lightroom, then you actually will find that rather difficult to do. Okay, so if I change the screensaver here, I've got a photograph here. This is uh, quite a horrendous photograph. I'm just gonna drag that into pictures from my desktop there. Don't know why I did that. Command and Z will undo it, okay? Control and Z undoes on Windows. Command and Z undoes something that you've just done wrong in uh, Mac. Okay, uh, but yeah, if I want to change a screensaver and I'm going to use three fingers, using three fingers here swipes between all the various desktops that I've got here. So it's uh, your middle three fingers, okay, and swipe them left or right on the trackpad and that will uh, get you to different desktops. So if I want to change my desktop background to something rather more handsome, it's best to drag the photo that you want into 
the pictures folder here because then you can two finger tap you can change desktop background and then down here there's pictures and it's nice and easy okay and I can find that lovely photograph where did that lovely photo go there it is ah! <laughs> You don't have to make it fill the screen, by the way. That's horrendous. <laughs> you can center it if you wish, or you can tile it, or you can fit it to the screen, which is perhaps a little bit better. Maybe I'll keep that one for a little while. Goodbye, handsome busker. We loved you, but we don't. You can change the color of the background should you wish to. For example, let's go to maybe that sort of orangey colour. Tangerine, that's called. You can even use the little pipette here to just click on something. And now I've got that colour there on my, on my background there. That's horrendous. That might have to go back to the handsome busker in a minute. So there we have just changed the desktop background and uh, if, if the picture that, you ch that you've chosen is actually on a hard drive, when the Mac reboots, so you switched off or you're doing a restart, the first thing it does is look for a picture to go on the desktop, ba on, on the desktop background before it checks any hard drives. So if it can't find the one you want uh, the, on the actual local hard drive, it will put the last one that was already there. So it's a pain in the neck. Um, here's Siri again. This is called Launchpad. Launchpad here is supposed to work like your iPhone. In other words, swiping along here, I'm using two fingers to swipe. Three fingers won't work, one finger won't work, two fingers will work, and you can find all of your apps that you have on your computer here. I don't really like it. I tend not to use it. This is called Mission Control. Mission Control, it shows you all of your desktops that you have open, but I just like to swipe in between them with three fingers. It's better, works better. This is the App Store. You won't be able to use the App Store unless you create an Apple ID at the beginning. These are all various different uh, programs that I have on my computer. Um, the dock will come loaded with some, okay? These first four here are preloaded. This is for burning stuff onto CDs. I'm not gonna worry about that. This is QuickTime Player, which is very useful, uh, particularly for recording uh, screen say um, for recording your screen or for making a quick and dirty video you can uh, get it to use the built-in camera to record you speaking Safari is the default web browser that comes with uh, the Mac it's the equivalent although it's a zillion times better than Internet Explorer or Edge you can use other browsers if you wish. I've downloaded Firefox here. Uh, Firefox is uh, what I use if I'm uploading a very long and complicated video and I'm frightened that browsing in Safari, I'll close it down or something stupid like that. I use Firefox instead and then use Safari for ordinary browsing. So Safari is open here. As you can see, it's uploading a video at the moment. Again, Pressing the add button here brings up lots of tabs for you. Okay, I'm just gonna go back to this one, okay? Because here's another way of not clicking out of something accidentally. And that is to click on the tab, move it up, let go. What, get out. Now this window is now separate and I can use this yellow 
button here to do the genie effect and minimize that down there. Now I can browse away as happy as Larry, okay? Um, Safari works like an ordinary browser, okay? If we open up some of these windows, okay? Have, ooh, may, may all the way to hell, probably. Let's open up uh, some of these others, okay? Maybe we'll, we'll then uh, change, where did I just get may, may all the way? Oh, there she is, again. All right, I'll go to a better website, shall I? And now, again, this has been the standard Mac shortcut for a long time now. Two finger swipe, left or right. Swiping to the left works as a back button. Swiping to the right works as a forward button, okay? With two fingers like that. And again, you can make this full size. Use your little pointer button if you don't want full size and it brings it back down again. So that, that is basically Safari. If you want your favorites, your favorites are in here, like this, okay? Um, if you make a page a favorite on your iPad or iPhone, it will also be a favorite on your iMac as well, or on your desktop Mac, whatever, laptop, whatever. And to add a page to the favorites, okay, let's add a page to favorites. So. Let me do a Google search. Okay, photographers of the United, of, of the nineteenth century. Let's pretend that this is a fabulous website that I really want, and I want to make that a favourite. The share button here will add it to something called a reading list, or you can add a bookmark, which is basically what I want. And it says, add this page to favorites, which I do. And I've got some menus here and I'm gonna put it in useful sites here and add, okay? And then when I next click out of there, let's go back, all right, we're going to my folder called useful sites then you'll find that photographers of the 19th century is in my favorites okay um, you can create folders full of favorites you can manage it all with the bookmark button here okay you can edit them means you can delete all the ones that you had 400 years ago that you don't want anymore and um, that sort of thing okay that is essentially safari for you what other stuff is on here that I need to show you? Maps works like maps. Um, ah, mail and contacts are useful to have. <laughs> the best thing I would say is to find a way of importing your contacts from either Facebook or from your mobile phone into contacts. I mean, I've basically had an iPhone for years and years and years. And because I use iCloud, which you can set up the preferences for in system preferences here. Um, here's iCloud, okay? You can choose what you want to sync. Um, but yeah, I don't want my photos to sync across anywhere because that's just gonna confuse me. But basically all my Safari bookmarks, because that's ticked, those uh, will will sync across from device to device. The calendars will. So if I set up a, a a hair appointment on my phone, then that will also be on my Mac, and it's rather good. And you've got back to my Mac and find my Mac. And the keychain, what basically the keychain does is it remembers passwords for you. So you log on to a new website, Argos, for example. You sign up for it it will say, do you want Safari to remember this across your devices on your keychain? And you say yes, and then that means that if you go into Argos on your phone, it knows the password. If you go into on your iPad, it knows the password. Um, so that is one that is well worth setting up. Oh, there's Ashley. Oh, he, obviously my MacBook Air's video is up there. Oh, bless him. Right, one other thing here. We don't want all this rubbish on our desktop. So, 
hold down command or even shift click on a few things that you want to clear up maybe that one as well okay I'm holding down command here okay and then let go two finger tap on one of the icons okay and now it does a new folder with selection and watch that clear those up okay so I can call this rubbish on my desktop Boom. and there I've made a little bit of space on my desktop but uh, yeah so that is essentially um, finding your way around the the basic nuggets of the Mac from there on in you should be able to uh, at least perform basic housekeeping on your Mac okay uh, there are a couple of compatibility issues that uh, need to be addressed okay particularly if you don't have Microsoft Office you can get Microsoft Office for the Mac but uh, if you're just basically typing away for you and you're not doing sort of sharing between home and work and stuff like that where they might be all on PC you don't really need it if you do use office on the Mac then you take that on a USB drive into work plug it into your PC uh, at work you'll find that it will open up with with no fuss or bother between versions on the PC or the Mac okay and it's the same you type something at work bring it home open it up in Word it will it will open um, the only issues that you'll have with that are pretty much similar sorts of issues to what you would have anyway for example if you're using a PowerPoint PowerPoint is one of the most you know infamous uh, culprits of this supposing I use PowerPoint 2007 to create a PowerPoint and then I'm now in uh, 2018 and I'm still on my PC and I open it up in the latest version of PowerPoint and suddenly all the formatting goes bonkers and that I'm afraid is what you have to live with okay um, it's nothing at all you know if, if you open up a, a PowerPoint that you created on your Apple if you open that up on a PC and you find that the formatting's gone bonkers it's not because one was Apple and one was PC it's because PowerPoint is PowerPoint and it's not very good at retaining formatting with the odd caveat here and there opening up office documents between uh, Mac and PC is no problem okay they just work all right uh, pages is a slightly different story pages can open up a word document numbers for example will open up an Excel document but Excel will not open a numbers document and Word will not open up a pages document so you do actually need to use the share button if you're using pages here okay and you want to take this into work print it out at work for example then file export to you can choose PDF Word plain text pages 09 but that's actually really really useful uh, to be able to do that so the other reason why you might want to use this export menu is with something like Facebook or social media because they can only post JPEGs and you cannot export directly to a JPEG from pages okay so file export to PDF first okay I'm choosing best because that's a lovely photograph next okay I'm gonna go to that rubbish folder wherever that rubbish folder went it's on my desktop isn't it so if I go to desktop rubbish on my desktop there we go vote Sergio export that and then that will go into that folder I open that now you'll see that it's now got PDF written there so you can tell the difference between the JPEG photograph the original photograph and then this poster which has now been changed into a PDF file because this is a by the way another little hint 
these little thumbnails I've never been able to get these thumbnails big enough for me to be able to see them with my failing eyesight but if you press spacebar on one of them it shows you what it is without having to open up the program so as you can see that's just the basic photograph and this one here is the PDF with the writing on it as well okay that I created in pages all right now something you don't need on a Mac is Adobe Acrobat Adobe Acrobat is the PC kind of default program for opening up PDF files PDF files are useful because having created this in pages I've got some fonts here and some formatting and stuff that I want to keep regardless of whatever it's opened on okay even if it's opened on an old brick okay I want that those fonts and things to stay the same okay I could choose a really uh, bizarre font here that I've downloaded myself from a library like dafont.com or something like that and then if I give that to somebody else even somebody else with a Mac they won't necessarily have that font a PDF makes a non-editable version of a document so that the formatting is all the same okay so we've created a PDF from that and PDFs open in a program called preview which is the equivalent of Adobe Acrobat Reader okay you can make previews on here uh, uh, PDF files on here as well which you can't with the Acrobat Reader you have to buy the uh, the Acrobat software I think to be able to make yourself PDFs on a PC rubbish on my desktop open this and it opens in a program called preview and from there I can do file export and here I can choose JPEG I'm not going to carry on with that okay but uh, that will then make a document that can then be uploaded onto Facebook okay so we're done here while you're using pages some things which are the basics of using this because as I say it's free on the Mac pages numbers and keynote which are the equivalent of Word Excel and PowerPoint are free on the Mac you don't need to buy anything else okay so we'll make a lovely poster on here and this will just uh, give you a quick idea of how power uh, uh, pages works okay so we'll do a new document okay new document uh, we'll do that way I'm only doing the rubbish poster here okay and this now opens up as a new document here all right uh, we can save it okay it will automatically default to wanting to save it in iCloud okay now if I came away from this and clicked out of it with the red button pages auto saves at the moment it will save it as an untitled document somewhere in pages iCloud because that is where it wants to uh, uh, defaultly save it okay but I'm just going to call this a crap poster okay and I'm going to save it somewhere where I'm going to be able to find it again okay and I'm going to save it in rubbish on my desktop okay just clicking there so it gives you the little drop down there okay if what you cut what you want where you want to save it is not here choose other and then you can locate it somewhere else okay um, so here's a crap poster and I want to first of all uh, make a text box type to enter text on the right we have a sidebar which is contextual okay uh, that basically means that if I'm working with text all the options down here are going to be to do with text okay if I work with a photograph then this changes this sidebar here 
changes to photos. All right, so select this, okay. And it's far more intuitive than using that blessed ribbon. That blessed ribbon is different on a Mac from a PC. So if you go from one between the other, you'll just be searching forever for options. This is far more convenient. Look at this. Okay. Now, I want to change the font. Okay. The only thing that I don't like is that you used to have a search option for, for fonts that you wanted to get to, but it doesn't seem to have them anymore. Okay. But you can use... Just click up here until you get the size that you want. Okay, we'll go back one. Okay, now, this is a text box. Now, if I now start typing away, wait a minute, let's get this up here. Yeah, it's text wrapping is going Oh, stop it, I've just pressed command and spacebar there to bring up spotlight if you were paying attention about four hours ago when I started this video. But there we go. So that's essential and it's going to undo all that rubbish. But that's its wrapping option. It's wrapping. Click on the text box. Now you can see these options have changed. All right. I want to be able to drag this box anywhere that I'd like on this poster, okay? I would like everything else that I put in this document to be separate from and be able to be moved independently from this text box. Stay on the page. Text wrap, none. Okay, that was in the arrange menu, see? Arrange menu, all right? That will help you format your text. Change the color. Add any kind of alignment or bold or underlining that you'd like. Okay. Oh, that'll do. And now, because I've used that arrange menu thingy here, I can now drag that wherever I'd like on the uh, page and you'll see that we have these very handy little guidelines. Okay, I think um, Word has started using those as well. But again, Apple did it first. <laughs> right, I'd now like to add in a picture. Now you can just drag in a picture from somewhere. Uh, maybe your desktop or something like that. Fine, do that. But you can also use these shapes, okay? A square, for instance, here, okay? And again, resize it to whatever you'd like. Place it wherever. Now, at the moment, we're still using text. We don't want to do that. We want to go to style, okay? Here we have the fill options. At the moment, it's choosing color fill and you can change the colors on there, okay? And you can even, again, use this pipette here to find somewhere and change it to the same color as something else. We don't want to do that. We want an image fill, okay? So now we can choose our image. Excuse me there. Um, I got interrupted by the doorbell and it's now a few days later. I'm going to change that image because I don't want it. So I'll just choose another one here. Maybe uh, that one. Oh, <laughs> Sergio again. So now I have the picture in there. At the moment, it's scaling to fit the image. So now you can see, or you might be able to see, especially maybe if I put a border, a line border around the picture. Now you can see that the box isn't full. So you may want to scale it to fill the box like that. So having got your photo in, go to the arrange again, stay on page 
and then choose text wrap none and that way you can now move this around as you'd like you can resize it obviously and it's keeping the scaling all right so i can add another shape in here perhaps maybe do a circle this time okay and you can you see how choosing stay on page text wrap none you can get lovely overlapping effects here as well all right so if i drag that big enough for you to be able to see it okay and i think holding the shift button down while you drag yeah that keeps it as a circle all right so here's my circle and again i'm going to choose another image fill so style instead of choosing color fill you can have gradients as well if you want to just play with that all right Adv uh, image fill i don't know what the difference is between advanced image fill is it puts the last picture in that you had all right don't want to do that uh, i want to choose another one okay so click choose okay i've just basically navigated here to uh a folder okay and again scale to fill scale to fit looks a bit rubbish here all right but let's scale to fill all right there is a way and i couldn't find it actually but i've done it before where you can actually move the contents so that for example you don't want too much of this blue and white up here but you might prefer more of the specs um, there is a way of doing that only it's temporarily escaped me how to do it um, but there you, you can do it and you can crop an image as well uh, in there all right so now you can choose again now this is a bit confusing really but we have an arrange menu up here okay so you can send backwards like that so you can get a, an overlap like that if you would like. I can't see any reason why you would like that, but maybe if we make that a wee bit smaller. Okay. All right, so I can choose a border, maybe a line border. The picture frames I find are just a bit of a novelty. They look a bit rubbish, uh, but you can make that border a bit smaller should you wish but I'll go back to five okay I'm gonna bring this back to the front arrange uh, bring to front okay I can group things together all right so supposing I want to have this and the picture here of Sergio and then so I've held shift down and clicked on it Do that again all right click on one of them then hold down shift click on another then hold down shift again, click on another, like that, okay, and then again arrange and group, and now these will move as one, all right? Uh, it does work in Word as well. Um, it's one of those features though that people hardly ever use. So then I can take yet another shape here, all right, I'll go back to having one of these, all right? drag it, do the arrange business, stay on the page, select the text wrap to none, okay, I'm going to put a line board around here, so style, maybe I'll change it to uh, a yellow colour here, alright, but again, you can use these, you can just sort of move it around on here, should you wish, or you can take a colour on the pipette and maybe choose a uh, perhaps uh, a skin color, perhaps, all right. Click on the thing we want here. Drag it around here, like this. Plop a border on it, a line border, again, <laughs> how boring. Okay, arrange, send to the back, so now we have our objects again brought to the front here, okay? And we can add some shadow on here. So 
Uh, at the moment, we can't because <coughs> we've got them grouped together. So we're going to ungroup them. So now I've got three separate icons again. Okay, now I can add some shadow, some drop shadow there. It's quite a subtle effect. You can adjust it as well. Okay. And again, put some shadow. This will put shadow on the text box. Oh no, it'll put it on the text as well. All right, so there we have some shadow there. Um, this does look rather rubbish, it has to be said. All right, but it's very easy, therefore, to move objects around in uh, pages. Far easier, in fact, than it ever is in Word, because in Word, for some reason, certain images, maybe ones you've downloaded off the internet and clip arts and stuff like that, will all uh, sort of behave differently. While I mention clip arts, uh, unfortunately, uh, Pages does not come with any. So if you want to use it, you have to go onto uh, an internet site and download some. There are uh, specialist websites where you can do that. All right, uh, this poster is saved. See, I can get rid of that, by the way. <laughs> All right, and then click it open again, file, open recent, and crap poster is there. All right, so that's simple pimple. All right, uh, come out of pages again. Uh, one thing I didn't explain about the dock, and that is how to get the programs that you want on here as opposed to the ones that are automatically there, all right? I've got this toast titanium thing here. No one ever records things onto CDs anymore. So it's a little bit redundant. I don't necessarily need it, all right? So what I do, I'm clicking and dragging with one finger and then it will change to remove and go, all right? If I want that back again, oh, silly me. I did it wrong. I can do, I can put toast, find toast again. Now that's opening. It's not open, oh. Yes, okay, it needs to be updated by its developer. Never mind, okay? All right, but that's opened. And now, in my options, I have the option now to keep that at the dock, all right? Now also here, you will have noticed in the options thing that you can assign it to, you can choose to have it uh, assign on all desktops or just this desktop, all right? Um, this is where this mission control thing comes in a little bit handy because I can now go to mission control, I can choose a desktop for it to, to open on, maybe this one here, all right, and then now, options assigned to this desktop, and now, when Toast Titanium opens, it will now open on this desktop, and if I use three fingers to swipe across, it's not open on any of my other desktops, all right? And as I say, you use this mission control thing here to add and remove desktops. You've got an add button there to have as many desktops as you like open here. Okay, and while I'm just quickly talking about desktops, I do promise I'll shut up because this video is over an hour long. All right, using three fingers and swiping back, okay, even beyond my first desktop, will bring me to the widget screen. I think you need to configure this in the system preferences, but I do like having it on here. I do like having the little translator here, for example. You can just put any widgets and things on here that you'd like, um, a bit like sort of swiping to the right on the home screen of your iPhone, uh, just to sort of get some basic utilities, which you can configure. Um, and again, the plus and minus buttons will allow you to add more widgets should you wish them, all right? Uh, they are a little bit out of date now. Um, now that people have notifications and stuff like that, and even in Spotlight, you don't really need a calculator because you can just say to Spotlight, what's the square root? Just say to Siri even. What's the square root of 50? 
the square root of 50 is approximately 7.07107. Thank you, Siri. Okay. And that's just command and spacebar and hold it down. Right, I really am going to shut up now. Uh, that really is plenty, I think, to be going on with. If you have any questions, do please ask. I'm sorry that this video went on for quite as long as it did, but hopefully even seasoned Mac users will have found something in there that they thought, oh, I didn't know that. All right, bye-bye. How do I stop this damn thing?